Hi, my name is Ilma, and today I'd like to share Philippians 1, 27 to 30. And here's the Word of God. Only conduct yourselves in a manner of worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and in no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but of salvation for you, and this too from God. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer on his behalf, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. Philippians 1, 27 to 30. That was the word of God. Now here's my devotional. Conduct yourselves worthy of the gospel. In this letter of Paul to the Philippians, he calls all believers in Philippi to ensure that they live in integrity and that their faith will be an evidence that they are worthy of the gospel or the good news. Paul emphasized the importance of their unity and that whether he was there to come and see them or even if he is not physically present with them, he wants them to remember that oneness amongst all of them will be the true mark of the Spirit's presence in their lives. He says that this is actually the weapon against those who oppose the gospel. Paul once again reminds them that for all believers, they needed to share in the suffering that Christ bore for all of them. It is not enough to just have faith in Christ, but also to suffer for him. Barclay comments on these following verses as, What does Paul expect from them? He expects them to stand fast. The world is full of Christians on the retreat who, when things grow difficult, play down their Christianity. The true Christian stands fast, unashamed in any company. He expects unity. They are to be bound together in one spirit like a band of brothers. Let the world quarrel. Christians must be one. He expects a certain unconquerability. Often evil seems invincible, but a Christian must never abandon hope or give up the struggle. He expects a cool, calm courage. In times of crisis, others may nerve may, may in terms of crisis, others may be nervous and afraid. The Christian will be still serene, master of himself and of the situation they can be like that, they will set such an example that the pagans will be disgusted with their own way of life, will realize that the Christians have something they do not possess, and will seek for very self-preservation to share it. One of the manifestations of a true Church of Jesus is that the body of Christ is not divided. They stand united and unafraid to declare their faith in their Savior, Jesus Christ. Sadly, we find so much division and chaos in a lot of churches today. Reflection. What happens when Christians fail to live their faith and be worthy of the gospel? When we do that, we are not being a true witness to the gospel. Because in, in James it says that we should not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So if we do not conduct ourselves worthy of the gospel, why are we Christians? Why can't we just be like the world? Then um, in, in, in the gospel, Jesus has been asking us to separate ourselves from the world not to conform with the world. Even though we're living in this world, we are not to conform with the world. So, when we 
want to be divided, that means we are not seeing what Jesus wants us to see. We're seeing our own flesh, we're seeing our own desires and everything. And uh, it is so sad because I came from a church where there's so much division. And it's so sad because people don't even see that there's division because everybody is so individualistic. Everybody is trying to do something uh, and, and fulfill whatever agenda they have for that church. And that is not the body of Christ, because the body of Christ, a church, is a family of believers who, um, who preach the gospel and live the gospel. It's not a family of many different kinds of people in one church with many different beliefs and many different ways of seeing the, the gospel, because that is clearly a sad, a sad thing to watch on the churches because so many churches are so lost. There's so many, much false doctrines because of all this uh, different agenda and different uh, plans. And, and uh, uh, it's sad because even the leaders themselves are the ones propagating all this division. Just so they can, they can use the church as uh, something that they could um, bring out their ambition, their goals, and all that stuff. It's so sad, and so I hope that a lot of people will recognize that um, if you become a believer, you ought to be. Your life is is a witness to what Christ is. So if your life is so far from what Christ represents, then why are you in the church? So I encourage you to conduct yourselves worthy of the gospel because we are going to have other uh, people who wouldn't want to be attracted to Jesus or attracted to, to what, what the good news is. Because if they see us living a different life from what we say, what credibility is that? So please, thanks for watching, and I hope you check my website at ilmaars.com for artworks and photographs. And I hope you subscribe to my channel from YouTube so I could make more videos for the Lord. Thanks for watching, and make sure that you conduct yourself worthy of the gospel.